Okay, so we're looking at um, expected value again. This time we're looking at it in a more traditional format, which is a word problem. And we're going to work from kind of classic expected value problem, one dealing with life insurance. So um, life insurance and gambling are probably um, two common example problems that you face, whether it be in your uh, textbook or in another class uh, regarding expected value. So let's read the problem and then we'll see what they're trying to get us to find. It says, find a, com a company's expected profit for a one-year $15,000 life insurance policy sold for $300.36 to a 35-year-old man who has a 0 0.998643 chance of surviving the year. So this number is actually accurate. I pulled this from an actuary table. Actuaries are the guys who come up with these probabilities. And um, the table has, you know, the probability will make it from one age category to the next one. So the probability a 35-year-old man in the United States will get from 35 to 36 is 99.8643 percent. So um, you know, high probability that it'll make it to that next year. Notice it's not 100, though. Something to think about, right? But either way, um, that's the probability that the person will survive a year. So if he buys a one-year life insurance policy, um, you know, that's worth $15,000, that means if he should die, his family will get a check for $15,000. If it costs them this much, we're asking, what's the company's expected profit? So how do I know it's an expected value problem? Of course, this phrase is usually given there. If it doesn't say expected profit, it'll say something like expected value. It could say average value, um, average amount of money, etc. Something that conveys the idea of what's expected to occur, what's going to occur on average. So find a company's expected profit. The other thing we want to pay attention to is that they say the companies. There's always going to be a point of view on the problem. Sometimes it doesn't matter. You know, you can just uh, work the problem from either point of view that you choose. But here we're going from the company's point of view, so we're going to make sure that we're aware um, what represents a, a loss for them, what represents a profit for them. Okay, and then of course we have dollar amounts and probabilities. So what we're going to do to solve this is to put it into a table format. So we're going to have x and p of x set up, but we want to remember that these uh, categories are actually going to be for us basically dollars and then like the probability that those dollar amounts occur, right? So try to keep in mind that even though we're calling it generically X, they're usually dollar amounts. And then the probabilities are going to be the probability that those dollar amounts that you list here actually turn out to happen, right? Or come end up happening. So just keep that in mind. All right. Now, before we get to filling in the table, I want to also think about this event, life insurance, and think about what determines the dollar amounts that are going to be paid out, right? There's some controlling event, some controlling outcome that's going to decide whether the company pays or doesn't pay. And in that case, for life insurance, yeah, I think it's pretty clear that the issue is whether you live or die, right? The person who buys the policy, they either live or die, and that's really what determines how much money is paid out to the person, right? So these controlling events I'm putting off to the side because they're not numerical ideas, right? The numerical values that are a result of these events we're going to put into the table. So let's think about it from the company's perspective. If the customer who comes in should pay for his policy and then live the entire year, what happens for the company? Well, I would say that basically they're going to collect the $300.36 from the customer when they come in to buy the policy, right? So $300.36. And that's going to be a profit for them because if the person lives the entire year, at the end of the year they have this piece of paper which is worthless, right? policy has expired, they didn't die, so the paper is now useless, and the company gets to keep that $300.36. It's kind of a win-win, right, because the company's happy they made profit, and the person who didn't die is certainly happy he's still alive, right? So that's a bonus. We'll put a plus sign there to indicate it's a profit for the company. Now what happens, though, if the person should sign the paper, you know, he's so excited he's covered himself and he's protected, he's not paying attention, steps off the curb, gets hit by a bus, you know, bam, dies, now the insurance guy says, oh, man. Got to write a check out to the family, $15,000. Gives the check away, right, to the family. One thing you want to keep in mind is that that's, of course, going to be a loss. So we want to make sure that we don't forget to put a negative here to represent the loss. The most common mistake when working these out is to forget to put the negative, and then your calculation is all wrong at the end. So make sure you put the negative when it's a loss. But the other thing you want to realize is that they didn't actually, you know, lose the full fifteen grand, right? Of course, what you want to do is you want to take your 15000 and you want to subtract off your 300.36 from that number to give you your 14,699 and 64 cents. You have to do that because the company is not going to fork back over the $300 the person paid for the policy, right? You're going to keep that sort of in the back pocket. 
they're going to write a check for 15 grand. So even though they're paying 15 grand, they still got that $300 in their back pocket. So let's put that number in then on the table. The proper number again is $14,699.64. Okay, so we now have the um, proper dollar amounts listed in the table. Now from here, we've got to plug in the probabilities. So again, look back at these controlling events over here, live and die. What's the probability the person lives for the entire year? That always has to be given to you. You can't be expected to know that. That's what the actuaries are for. They figure that out for you. Right? So we go from the problem. We find this probability. That's the person's probability of surviving the year. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the 0.998643 into the table. Once I've done that, then I have to figure out what's the chance the person dies. Well, it's an either-or thing, right? Either you live or you die by the end of the year. So it must be that this probability plus this must add up to 100% or 1. So if I take the number 1 and I subtract off that probability, I will end up with the probability that I die at the end, before the end of the year. So I have to do 1 minus 0.998643. And when I'm done, I get this result. 0 0.001357. Okay, so that's the probability that the person dies. Probability they live, probability they die. Once you have the table set up, which is probably the hardest part, the rest is just the mechanical calculations. From there, that's kind of routine. What you have to do to form the average is to do x times p of x. You multiply straight across the x values times the probability values. So let's go ahead and do that. It would be 300.36 times 0.998643. When you do that, you get $299 and let's say 9524115. Okay, so about 95 cents. I'm leaving all the decimal places on because we will um, round off at the end of the problem, not before that. Okay, then let's multiply these two numbers together to get the next column or next row filled in. So we have negative 14699.64 times 0 0.00. 1357. When you're done with that, you get minus $19 and essentially 95 cents. It's actually 94741148. Again, so carrying all the decimal places over. And then finally, from there, to finish the average, we're just going to sum or total this column. If we sum that up, we get the average value. The average value is going to end up down here. That's going to be our result. Okay, so from there we'll do 299.9524115 minus 19.9474114. When I finish, I get the result 280.01. Okay, so that's rounding. You know, the last uh, number is 0 .005, so the 5 causes us to round up. So about $280.01 is what the company will make per policy. So remember, this is your average, your expected value. And let's just talk about the interpretation of the result. What this means is that when they sell, you know, say, a 1,000 policies, by the end of the year, when they look at how many times they paid out and how much money they collected in revenue, they're going to have a big pile of money. Then they're going to divide that pile of money divided by the number of policies they sold. When they do that, they should come up with something close to $280. They'll never actually make $280, right? They'll either make $300 or they're going to lose $14,699.64. But what's going to happen is when you take the total pile of money that the company brings in in revenue and divide it by the number of policies sold, it'll work out to be about $280 per policy. So what this company has to think is that for every thousand policies they sell, they'll bring in about two hundred eighty thousand dollars. Not a bad business to be in, huh?